Good evening. This video cast is for the reading that we will have a quiz on on January 10th, this Friday, uh, through pages 274 through 284. I'll go through the key vocabulary words for this little section. It's mostly covering the topic of forgetting, why we forget things, etc. So we'll start off with a recall and recognition. We've mentioned, we've talked about both of these in class. Recall is your ability to identify information um, out of the blue or just to retrieve information that's been previously learned. This is a fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. That's recall. When you have nothing to, to help you out, you just got to figure it out. It's a vocabulary quiz. Um, here's, the, here's the word. Give me the definition and an application. Recognition, on the other hand, the person only needs to identify the item previously learned. So recall was when I told you to name the seven dwarfs. Recognition was when I gave you the list of the seven of a whole mess of names and the seven dwarfs were in there. Everybody did better on recognition than they did on recall. There was one or two people in the class that got recall correct there was a bunch of people who got recognition correct. Um, so recall is the more difficult of the two, but it's the, it's the one, especially in this class, that we need to be the best at. Moving on to priming. Priming is the activation uh, of our memories, and it's usually unconsciously. Um, the example that the book gives is you see a picture of a rabbit, and then you're later asked to spell the word hair. Um, if you saw the picture of the rabbit, you're going to spell it H-A-R-E, like a hair. Uh, maybe if I showed you a picture of some hair on somebody's head, you would spell it H-A-I-R. But because you heard, saw the rabbit, you're going to spell it this way because your, rec your memory was primed in that instance. Um, we also, another example um, might be if... I showed you um, a car, and um, I asked you, I asked you about a question about automobiles. And the first thing that I said, give me an example of an automobile. And you said car. Or if I showed you a motorcycle, and I said, give me an example of a vehicle. You might say motorcycle because you were primed. The next part is seven sins. This is kind of in quotation marks. Seven sins of forgetting. These are the things that make us forget. Um, there, uh, we'll start off with just, there's actually like three sins of forgetting. Then we have distortion and intrusion. But we sometimes, they're usually lumped together, seven sins of forgetting. The first one is absent-mindedness. This is when we're just not paying attention. We forget stuff because we're not effortfully mindedness. We're not effortfully processing the information. Um, happens all the time. Happens in class when you're not paying attention. Absent mindedness. We forget things. Uh, we, it went into our short term memory. We didn't process it. We didn't uh, encode it effortfully and we lost it. Second is transience. Transience is just our memories start to fade over time. We, if you were in sixth grade, you probably remember a lot of your sixth grade year really well. Today, when you're a junior or senior, you look back at your sixth grade year and there's a lot of memories that you don't remember quite as well as you would have remembered uh, four years ago, five years ago when you were in sixth grade. So that's just transience. Uh, the third one is blocking. Um, it's just our inability to access information. This is the tip of the tongue phenomenon. The tip of the tongue phenomenon. This is, it might be a vocabulary word in your book, I can't remember. But the tip of the tongue phenomenon is that where you have the, you know the information, you just can't access it. Like, I know the name of that actor in that movie, but what the heck was his name? But you're not able to quite access it. Tip of the tongue phenomenon. That may show up on a test, and it may show up on the AP exam. So you should know tip of the tongue. That has to do with blocking of your information. Then we jump over to distortion. You've got misattribution. 
misattribution is confusing the source of the information. Um, so this happens every once in a while. So say maybe you heard me say something and then you later remember that you that your mom said it when it was really me, but you gave credit to your mom. It's just misattribution. You forgot who actually gave you the information where you actually got it from. Suggestibility. This is the one that you're going to learn about uh, later on in the chapter, the last part when I've talked about Elizabeth Loftus. Elizabeth Loftus and her work with the, um, the children and whatnot we talked about. So suggestibility is uh, misinformation. So how, how hard did the car crash into the other car? when maybe there wasn't a crash at all, but by you hearing the word crash, you were, you remember things a bit differently. Uh, bias, our, our previous beliefs color our memories, and so that, that help, makes us forget what really happened. And then finally, another sin of memory is persistence, where we can't, it's kind of like the opposite, we can't forget what happened. Um, so this is like usually traumatic events, a lot of times we can't forget what's going on. Ebbinghaus Forgetting Curve, we talked about, uh, that's on page 281 in your book. It basically says that um, you're, you lose information really quickly. Actually, it's probably more like this. You so that's the graph. You lose information very quickly, then it levels off. You don't, you, you don't forget it. So if you're in a Spanish class, when you get out of that Spanish class, the amount of Spanish that you remember goes and then it sort of levels off and it doesn't go any lower than that. So say here was the bottom of the curve. So you're, you're going to remember this much pretty much forever. But you're going to lose all this rather quickly. Um, I don't know uh, how many of you remember as much from the history class from last semester, but it's the same thing or from last year. It goes down, 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 and then it levels off. Unless you do something with this information, or you were you it was you made it especially meaningful to you, it's going to level off, and you're, you're you're still when we make the graph, you're still going to remember this much pretty much forever. It's going to go down much 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 more slowly over time. Uh, mood congruent th uh, theory. This was kind of cool. This is that we remember things based on the mood that we're in. So if we're happy. Uh, the example that I like to use is with boyfriends and girlfriends. When we're when we're in a happy mood, remember all the good times, how awesome he or she is, all the th times they bought you roses, etc. And when we're mad at them, or when we're mad in general, we remember all the bad things that they've done, how they left the toilet seat up, or how they uh, were looking at that other girl, etc. So mood congruent, we tend to have memories based on the mood that we're in. Um, this one, these last two here, retroactive interference and proactive interference. Um, this is retroactive. Retro means old, right? Like retro gaming or retro whatever. Retroactive interference. Interference means something that's going to interfere with your memory, interfere with you retrieving that information. Proactive interference is something that's new. So retroactive is when new information interferes with old information when new information interferes with old information and proactive interference is when old information interferes with new information if you write it out like this and use the o here and the uh, e here for this you're going to be uh, this will help you remember this is a little mnemonic that we talked about yes in yesterday's reading so Retroactive interference, new interfering with old, that would be an example of uh, you got a new locker combination this year in PE, and you don't, no longer remember the locker combination that you had last year. Phone, you got a new phone number because you moved houses, and you no longer remember your old phone number. We have a more difficult time. Proactive is you were taught how to uh, take notes in a different class, the old way of doing things, and now I'm telling you how to take notes in this class, a new way of doing things, and the old, you can't remember my way of taking notes because the old way of taking notes is interfering with that. So that's proactive. So 
remember that the word interference means it's interfering with you remembering, interfering with your memory. All right. Pro. So if it's interference, we're talking about memory. It's interfering with your memory. Just write it out just like this. If you're on the test and the margins, write it out. And you shouldn't have any problem remembering this. Old interferes with new. Old information interferes with new. And new information interferes with old. Finally, uh, this is in your on the blog. I mentioned this, but I wanted to talk about it. MindTools.com forward slash memory HTML. It's a website on mnemonics and techniques to improve your memory. In the blog, I actually have you uh, answer a few questions about this to make sure that you actually went and checked it out. This is actually a really cool website that you'll look at and it'll help you remember or learn techniques to remember things a little bit more efficiently. And you might find something that you really find useful and that you hang on to for you know the rest of your schooling, but it's definitely worth a look. So check this out right here. It's in the blog, I've linked to it. And uh, you'll be happy that you did, I'm sure. At least it'll be cool to check out if you don't ever actually use anything from it. So with that being said, have a good night, good reading, and we'll see you, I guess this will be uh, Friday, so we'll see you next week.